Hi, I'm Shane. Today we're going to be testing our Extreme Duty Snowblower. This model we have here is an 84 inch. It's matched up with a Bobcat T770 High Flow. Uh, this snowblower is meant for extreme conditions. Uh, conditions where the snowpack is either very deep or very hard or both. Some of the features that we have on this snowblower that make it uh, well suited for those conditions are the large uh, serrated auger flighting. This auger has a 28 inch diameter and expands the full width of the snowblower. The uh, flighting itself is 3 8 inch thick AR400. And you can see it has these aggressive uh, serrated teeth on it to help bite and claw through the heavy snow. The fan on this snowblower is 28 inches in diameter and it has a five blade design that, with a special shape. The blades are made out of uh, grade 80 steel, so they're extremely strong. The uh, size of the fan is matched well with the uh, size of the auger so that it can keep up in production. Uh, this type of snowblower is meant for high flow skid steer loaders and also small to medium size wheel loaders. So right away when you look at this snowblower you can see that the frame design, the structure of it is quite different from a, a typical snowblower. And the reason for that is because of the amount of snow and the, the conditions of the snow that it's typically used in. Um, you, you'll usually find this snowblower being used in the mountains or areas where they have high snowfall totals. And so the, with respect to the frame itself, you'll see that the end plates here are basically open. This allows for it to cut through the heavy snow better and also to uh, cut and drag in the snow that may fall in. Um, the back of the blower body itself is heavily reinforced with plate steel. It also has reinforcing tubes that run from the mounting plate up to the front corners to support each side of the blower body to make it stiff. The bottom of the blower frame, you'll notice that we have trip cutting edges. That's important for if you're using it in a municipal setting where you might have manhole covers or curbs. Um, the snowblower will uh, ride over those obstructions uh, safer and also it's easier on your equipment. Um, so you don't have that high impact, that high jolt um, and loading that you'll see through the whole structure. One of the features that we have here on the, on the corners is the side cutters. This is important for conditions when the snow is really deep. Uh, if the snow is deeper than the body of the blower itself, this will shear off the side and cut it off and hopefully it'll fall down into the auger area and be consumed. So the way this blower is sitting right now, the side cutter comes right up to 72 inches. So that'll vary a little bit depending on the, the angle of the blower. But it's a really nice feature to have when, you, when you're working in the mountains or an area where you have large drifts of snow. One of the unique features we have with respect to our auger drive here is that the, the frame, the structure that holds the auger itself uh, pivots with respect to the frame of the snowblower. So you can see here that we have the adjustment pin and we have some adjustment holes that you can select. What this does is it allows you to uh, either move the auger up or down and that changes the position relative to the cutting edge and the ground. So if, if you're working with a particular machine, uh, this helps you keep the auger in a nice position with respect to the ground. You don't want to be operating this uh, snowblower with the auger constantly grinding on the ground because it's hard on the auger, it's hard on the, the surface that you're working on too. But in some positions, uh, some places, you want to be able to have that auger closer to the ground. Other places, it's not as important and you can move it back up. So this is a nice feature. Also, while we're here, we can mention that the, the auger is direct drive, but it's a little different than a typical hydraulic snowblower in that it actually has dual drive augers, uh, motors. So the motors themselves, uh, there's one on each side and they work in parallel. So they're splitting the flow and so you have even torque distribution across the whole auger. You're not just driving it all from one side. And it keeps it nice and compact. All the hoses are contained and protected inside the arm. So they're not out rubbing in the snow or being damaged. Okay, so on the back side of the snowblower, I want to mention a few features here. Uh, first of all, we use uh, two skid shoes that are very large. They're nine inches diameter, about the size of a dinner plate, and they pivot. And they're on the bottom of a uh, threaded rod so that they can be easily adjusted from the top. So you have a really nice fine adjustment with that, but it's easy to lock in place. Uh, skid shoes are important on a snowblower. 
that's how you determine how much down pressure you have on the cutting edge. You can rock it fore and aft on those skid shoes on the fly if you want to change whether you're scraping or not scraping. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about the chute uh, design. This is a 14 inch diameter base chute and we're using five rollers on this uh, larger chute. The roller design is very important, very specific. Uh, the reason we make it this way is so that it does not freeze up as easily as a typical snowblower where you have plate on plate contact. Here we have a rolling surface on a rounded edge of the chute. So this is a more expensive method for making a snowblower chute but we do it for the specific reason of chute freeze up. The uh, chute deflector itself here, we're using twin cylinders so that you have a nice even load on the chute itself. And you can see the four segmented deflector. Uh, this is gonna give you that nice curve if you wanna blow the snow down uh, right next to you. The chute itself is mounted to a subframe that can be unpinned and tipped. Uh, this is more so needed for when you mount a truck loading chute to this snowblower. Uh, you typically don't need to tip it over when you're using the standard chute. One more feature I want to mention about the chute is that we're using a UHMW liner in the backside. This is just going to give it a little bit more slippery surface so that the snow in, in warm conditions won't be able to stick as easily. Uh, maintains your casting distance a little bit easier too. On the back side of the snowblower is where the fan motor is located. On this extreme snowblower we're using a five piston radial design motor that gives high efficiency and is able to accept high flow rate and high pressure. Uh, the, the performance difference is quite noticeable from the cab. Uh, when, it, when a typical Giroller motor might start uh, slowing down, the piston motor keeps pulling through. So even at lower speeds, it has tremendous torque. And so you notice that even as the loading rises and starts blowing more and more snow, the difference in casting distance is not as pronounced. Inside the fan wrapper, we have a 3 16 inch thick uh, liner, steel liner made up of AR400 material. And this is to protect the fan wrapper itself from wear. Um, certain customers might be using this in conditions where you have sand and gravel or some other abrasive material. And this is going to protect the fan wrapper and give you a wear surface that can be easily changed out if it does happen to wear out. Another feature I want to mention on the front side of the blower body are these stainless steel shields. Uh, they come in, they're segmented, first of all, so that they're less prone to bending but they're also pivoted to the frame. They're pivoted and mounted to these small brackets. They are here to prevent uh, material from, that might be spit forward or, or thrown forward from the auger or the fan. It's gonna keep the snow uh, knocked down and, and in front of the snowblower itself. So this is uh, really nice for if you're cleaning up near the, the end of a run, it's gonna keep the snow from getting too far out in front of you. Um, they're pivoted so that if you do cut into really hard snow, they're not gonna be damaged, they're just gonna fold back. And they're made out of stainless steel so that they're not gonna corrode. Okay, so we're gonna try to cut some snow here from a pile. This pile is snow that's been blown into this area all winter. So we've had a roughly 50 inches of snow here and uh, been cleaning this yard. All the snow has been blown into this one pile. So this is a full yard's worth of snow in one spot. I wanted to give you an idea how hard it is. It's kind of hard to demonstrate on video, but the uh, it's pretty much rock hard. Uh, so it's gone through many cycles of warming, thawing, and then refreezing. Uh, just this last weekend, there was temperatures up about 45, and now this morning it was 28 again. So it froze rock hard again. So we're gonna demonstrate how this works to cut this hard snow. And you can see that not only is the snow hard, but now it's also very dense. So there's a lot of mass, a lot of weight here, a lot of uh, water that we're blowing a very uh, good distance. Okay, so I hope you liked the video we did today for the Extreme Snowblower. Um, I was very impressed with how it handled the snowpack here. Uh, this pile was uh, up to six feet deep and it has uh, probably at least four layers of different snow that we've blown on top of it over the course of the winter. So 
um, the snow itself is basically like ice. It's very dense, very heavy, very hard. Uh, it took a lot of effort to uh, actually cut something that deep. You had to take multiple stair step cuts. But uh, as far as the cutting ability, the auger works terrific. It chews up the hard snow, doesn't even hesitate. The fan and the piston driven uh, fan itself, it just works tremendous to keep uh, the snow moving and performance wise is very happy with it. Check back as we continue to make more videos like this. Be sure to give us a call or check out our website if you have any questions.